is not yeah. as cool as it is. It's quite religious. I've yeah. heard his father was there. Thank you, Mr. Kline. There's not many of them around. Okay then, ladies and gentlemen, as promised, Ron Harper. Now Ron, uh, yesterday we filmed an hour just like that, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to be against the clock again today. <laughs>
to save money, they're not sure whether it's going to make a series or not. So the, there was an opening scene where my four or five year olds, that's before Thomas and Alice came up to them all, we uh, landed our plane in occupied in France somewhere, and there was Rick Jason and a couple of people from combat on the ground. Well, Lieutenant Garrison, good luck with your mission, we'll see you. And you make it through. And they took off and we did the pilot. Mm -hmm. If they hadn't sold the pilot, that would have been an episode of, uh, of combat. But having sold it, when they came back and they had to go and reach that one scene with other actors, and it just became um, the pilot episode for, for Garrison. So that was, uh, that was really, I did a pilot about three years ago uh, called, uh, uh, called uh, um, Rose button my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Very experimental. <laughs> yes. yes. It was a, you know, it was an hour <coughs> pilot, a uh, very good pilot with good actors in it. Uh, about uh, two high corporate uh, executives who hated each other, and the, and the drama between them and their corporation and family, and just mm -hmm. sort of like what, what's going on now? Mad money is is what it's doing. And uh, it didn't sell, and I was kind of shocked. But they always yes, I thought they always sold. <laughs> it's one of these things, though, isn't it? Sort of, it, 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 it's it's the wrong series at the wrong time. Exactly, right. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking about tests, and we can quickly move on to Planet of the Apes before I give you the opportunity to ask some questions. I'm really hugging you on again, which is such a pleasure. And so, basically, it's water. But, oh, yeah. um, in terms of um, working with James Norton on that one, yeah. did, did you actually test together or were you aware of him prior to the series at all? You know, I wasn't in there until we did test together. Mm -hmm. And uh, see, I tested for it, as I said, you know, on the, the week that I tested, I think they tested about 10 guys. And I understand they continued to test. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting because I went off of it in 1974. I left the next day after the test to go on my honeymoon, the first time I go to America, and went to Europe uh, for the honeymoon. And while I was there, I got a call to come back mm -hmm. to test again. And, well, number one, uh, I, I apparently they had decided to use me for it, but they wanted to do two They wanted to lighten my hair as they did with Trump and asked him so that the apes would know what to do with a you know, blonde white guy or something. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to test me and, and again with some of the actors for the James, uh, the part that James not in that. Right. So I, that time, I mean, I had the part, but I tested with about 10 guys to play the James not the part. Okay. It was, I think, his second time that he had tested for. Right. Right. So we did that. That sounds good to me. So now we're going over to questions from the floor. And that was wasn't it? red hot. So click your light on. <coughs> click that button. Is your red light on? Yeah, there it is. I see a red light right there. Yeah. Uh, hi. Imagine yesterday that. Click your button again, please. There we go. Over to you. You mentioned yesterday that Fox was so confident in Magnus Gates that went straight to see these without even commissioning a pilot um, yes. that wanted to change for the movies. But um, we were never made aware of why he just pulled off for only 13 shows. It seems too small a number to have an accurate view of the ratings just over 13 weeks of transmission. Was it cut off suddenly or was it sort of winding down how it is? I mean, that, that's an interesting question in terms of, I, I assume the original idea was at least to go for a full season of 26 then, from what happened there. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, but we ended up with 13, so, was it all we did? Yeah. 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 It's 14. 14. 14. 14. Mm -hmm. One out, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to use my wrist, but, um, <laughs> we just got that more. No. I, I guess, I must say, I, the disappointment was so great. 
for all of us, I think I mentioned Fox, we did shoot it without a pilot, which is extremely unusual. But the five movies had already made uh, half a billion dollars, so they said, this is a shoe in <laughs> So let's get it on the air because we know we're going to make more money with it. So they put it on the air, and I don't know if they had figured uh, that maybe it would, the novelty of the Ray, the apes running the world was, was still so fresh that it was a shoe in, which it wasn't. Personally, I think uh, yeah, they underestimated the audience. The stories were not terribly exciting. If you think about it, it was starting to boil down to one of us would get captured by the apes and the other two would rescue him. It was like, whose turn is it this time? To get, uh, you know, captured. And it's, it's kind of a dull, repetitious uh, uh, pattern to have. I, I certainly became aware of it after about four or five shows. And I had talked to the producers. You know, after all, it was a science fiction. Yeah. You could do anything. Mm -hmm. And people could say, well, that's not realistic. Oh, well, it's not real. Mm -hmm. And I guess if you think of it, some people have uh, ruminated on the fact that the original concept, uh, uh, that first movie was made by the final scene when Charlton Heston looks up and sees the Statue of Liberty and you know that you're on Earth and that somehow over uh, the evolution the apes have taken over was such a shock that's really what made that made that whole story originally and made the, the original movie. Once you get over that, it's not nearly as exciting. The surprise is gone. You know, the American system works. They, they Almost now overnight, don't they? But how the ratings have gone, even, even back in the 70s, it was a case that they were very sharp. Absolutely, yeah. There's a, there's a little theory, you know, that really you have probably one shot at being a hit. Yeah. If that first show doesn't knock them out, you're in very big trouble. And over the years, you know, it has gotten uh, more and more definite. Mm. Yeah, it's after years before when we, so we used to do 39 original episodes. You know, I don't remember that. Mm. 13 movies, 39. Mm. Like 87, 36. Like, and then they kept counting and counting down. And it, you, know, you could give it a shot for you know, about 15 or 18 or 12. Now, it's down, if you don't have it, if you don't make a big splash with the first one, you might get two or three or four out of it. I mean, there's a number of shows recently, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember one in particular which uh, uh, it's just not coming, but basically it's pulled from the schedule after two weeks. Yeah. That's it, you get two episodes, and that's it, they've decided that's it, you're giving it as much time as we're going to. Uh, ITV1 over here has just started to do the same thing with a lot of its shows. You'll give it a nine o'clock slot. Um, if after two weeks the, the, the ratings aren't going in the right direction, that's it. Yeah. Onto the late night show, yeah. you know, uh, it doesn't even get a chance to build an audience. It's, uh, it's in, in, the, the television in the world is becoming, you know, <coughs> more and more dominated by financial institutions, <coughs> and it's really money. It's not so much you know, emphasis on taking pride in a terrific show. It's mm -hmm. how much money is it making, or how much are we losing? Yeah, it's a business for, for, for the most part. And I suppose there's more and more people in the business as well, right? with so many channels. Exactly. So many, so many channels, so many, channels, so many offers. So many things that need to be commissioned, which can get more and more comfortable. Um, so yeah. it's, it's just uh, amazing. Is that close to an answer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right, thanks. It's just um, that's a thirteen percent. Something short time fraction of the pattern regions. I mean, did it just sort of go straight down? Or? It, it, it's, it, 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 it is one of these bizarre things that, uh, and we, we caught this disease from America that no show these days is really allowed chance to build an audience if, if it starts off on the wrong, wrong track. It, it's not giving time to, for word of mouth to spread, they just pull the carpet.
You know, I saw one last week. <coughs> I'm not really surprised. I'm almost surprised that it got on the air. It's a series. I don't know if you got called the cane man. Oh yes, I saw that. <laughs> see that. Oh, I don't know, but I, that it's, a crush. it's a road crush. crush. It's, it's a road crush. crush. It's, it's awful. It's absolutely. It's awful. a bad sitcom about three or four guys who all have to be in who have to be long, well, long hair and, and shaven and broad noses. Total American speech talking. Current day speech situation. Why call it cake? Why why go to the makeup? You've got to see just one episode because it, it, it's so unbelievably bad, it just transcends taste. I don't think that's gonna last. I don't know if like they've done the the three episodes so far that they're oh. gonna try and burn up. I, I mean there's nothing involved with them being came in except that they have long hair. You missed an opportunity. And they, they talk like um, Belize in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. And it's just like, what? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was worse. Somebody came up with the idea, or somebody said, yes, that's a great idea. Let's make this work. I think it's a comic strip in a newspaper or something like that. It's, it's, it's a cartoon series. I know, it's a commercial. Yeah. Oh, yes. For an insurance company. Yeah. You know, <laughs> It says, it's so easy, this insurance company is so great, and so easy, even a caveman could do it. Then they have a caveman talking to a psychiatrist, and he said, that's not very nice, is it? You know, for us, it came from that idea, it's not a good idea for a series. <laughs> Rob, do I detect that you're not going for a guest role? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Okay. I think we've got time for about one more question. So, uh, I've got a hand at the front. Can, can we have a light on for that? Person? There's an Australian yeah, girl right here I recognise. <laughs> I think her name is Sadie. She <laughs> came all the way from that down under. Wow. Terrific. Thank you. 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 Thank Starting from a small town like Turtle Creek, as we know you did, <laughs> what was it like finding yourself on Broadway in the middle of New York and then the madness of Hollywood? That's a good question. Uh, did, I mean, did you hear that? I came from a small town in Pennsylvania, it's the USA, called Turtle Creek. The little town was about, the, well, I grew up with that, about 5,000 people in there. And, uh, her question is, what's it like coming from there and then going on to New York for Broadway? <coughs> Gee, that's an excellent question. I just, it just seems so automatic. I just did one step at a time. I didn't expect anything. I didn't expect to fail. I didn't expect to be an actor, as you may have done. I thought I was going to be a lawyer, because I had this scholarship to Princeton, which was a great school. And uh, I suddenly, I, I mean suddenly, I finally realized that I would rather do acting than anything else. And if I had the opportunity, there was nothing to lose. I, I turned down a fellowship at Harvard Law School and studied with Lee Strasberg, I think I mentioned that. And I don't know, that's very interesting because all, all I've ever done is enjoy acting Try to be as good at it as I can. Try to learn as much as I can to make it better and and to enjoy it. I'm, it's interesting the whole cycle. When I first started acting <laughs> professionally, I was at the Univer University Players at Princeton. I mean, I had done uh, plays in church and high school, and, and I was still doing the uh, winter season at school. But sometimes as a professional. Uh, summer theater. So I, I was uh, delighted to find that they paid paid me fifteen dollars a week for food, <laughs> which I think is great now. And uh, we had, we had to stay in one of the uh, houses that the under, uh, undergraduate upper undergraduates lived in. So that's you know, that's all I got paid. And I was delighted to get something. And then you you step up. I remember when I was a young actor in New York, I finally got <coughs> a Broadway show, so I got a bank account. So then I guess you're going to have 
more than forty dollars a week. But I have to put it somewhere again. But so then, you know, eventually it was a hundred and a quarter when I was doing Broadway show. And last night, you know, no, yesterday, today, the time we were watching a tape of an old uh, an episode, the second episode I did in Hollywood, called Wagon Train. You know that series? Oh yeah. 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 And, and, and they said, wow, that was, I said, that's the same thing. And I got $500 for it. I said, I thought that was tremendous. I get it just for one show, $500. That's a five times more than I was making on Broadway. You know, I got paid more money when I was doing series, starring a series. It just progressed and progressed. And then it got to the point where I wasn't that much in demand. And it started coming down, coming down, coming down. And now I do independent features for practically nothing. I do workshops for no money. And it's, you know, the cycle is repeating itself. What are you going to do with a, you know, an in, incorrigible, inveterate actor? I keep acting. Sometimes they pay me, sometimes they don't. Don't tell the producers, though. Well, I have to say, you've not been incorrigible with us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs>